All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, finally, 12 volt time. So where to start? Red Arc. So this is the Manager 30 from Red Arc. Let's crack it open, see what we have. Just gonna walk through everything that we've got ready to go in and quick description of where it's going and then we're gonna crack straight into it. The Manager 30, um, not only is it a battery charger for your auxiliary batteries, um, it's also, so it's AC, DC and solar ready. Um, and that kind of was an advantage for me was having 240 volt charger inbuilt. Um, there's been a few times and we've actually, we usually take or pack a, um, like a 240 volt battery charger with us just in case we do have problems and we're staying at a park or something like that with power. Um, it's, yeah, we've been caught without it once um, and it would have been really handy to have. Having the ability to just plug this in if it's available and it's just gonna take care of the battery and everything connected, that is a good little uh, bonus. So yeah, that's the Manager 30. Obviously, you've also got the uh, remote monitoring as well. So a couple of choices. It does have either a small screen that has usage, trends, um, switching as well, I believe, um, but basically allows you to monitor what you're, what you're using, what you have remaining, that kind of stuff. This is the, uh, basically a total vehicle management system. So let's get this out and have a look. So this is essentially the red vision. Check it out. That is nice. All right, well, what does the Red Vision do? It's pretty much your one-stop shop to connect all your accessories to. Uh, fridge, compressor, lights, um, water pump, you name it. Um, it's pretty well plug and play, so to speak. So this front panel here is for your fuses. Everything's all in built. It's got 30 amp loads and 10 amp, load, 10 amp loads. Uh, switching for your inverter as well. Um, that's, that's very nice. So we also get, and again, the same as the Manager 30. There's no soldering required. There's no really lugs or anything like that required. It's, it all comes with these. Um, and that allows you to, again, plug and play, tighten them in, poke the wires straight in, crimp them down. But that makes installation a lot quicker and a lot easier. And you know, it comes with this, but it has two temperature sensors. So there's two temp inputs. So yeah, monitor, I guess, cabin, outside, fridge, not sure. Um, another data cable. This one is what gives you the switching. This is your control panel. All right, so check out how slim this is. It's quite light as well, and it looks it looks OE. So typical Red Arc um, build quality, top of their game. Um, so this here, essentially using one of these cables here, it plugs into, I believe, the TVMS here. So it plugs into the Red Vision and gives you control over everything you've plugged into this, which is pretty cool. Um, camp lights, fridges, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, if you connect it to this, you can control it or switch it from here. Um, and not only that, but it's also giving you real time information as far as water tanks. I think, so there's six water inputs here, six water inputs. That seems a bit overkill. Anyway, um, it'll give you tank volume, battery volume. It's got history on there, charge cycles. Um, look, I haven't read up on it that much, but for the extra cost of having this and being such a nice little unit, it's, I think it's worth it. So having this all together is gonna make this install so much easier, a lot quicker. Let's check out exactly where we're gonna install this in the Defender. So when installing this kind of stuff, 
when picking a location, the kind of thing I'm thinking about is keeping it dry uh, with water crossings. So I don't want it real low under seats, that kind of thing. Higher the better. Um, I also like to keep as much weight as low as possible. So you're also fighting that kind of fine line. Um, so I've decided that the best position I reckon is gonna be up here against this. Um, I'm not really big about having everything on display and I like just having it neat, out of the way, you don't have to think about it, that kind of thing. All right, so the Manager 30, I'm gonna stick up in here. So I've already ran some power for this. Get that out of the way. So I'm hoping to, that actually fits really nicely under there. The panel work kind of sinks away a bit. And then gets the red vision in there next to it, like that. Um, the display, not real sure yet. May put it up here somewhere, um, up the back here or something like that, um, or maybe even up the front. Um, and I've also got a couple of speakers to go in the back here as well. Um, so I'm also hoping to fit a speaker about here and yeah given there's only two speakers from stock from factory in the vehicle and i'm upgrading the head unit up the front uh, we need some more speakers get these out of the way for a moment in order to mount them there there's really not a great deal of i don't know support or something so this is what it looks i'll just show you the uh so I've just removed all the trim from this side. So the trim is out at the moment. Um, now, the idea is to get something flat as deep as possible to mount these two. Uh, it needs to be pretty sturdy, pretty light. So some three mil aluminum folded up. I um, thought the best way is probably to just mount it off of the existing holes on the on the inside rib here. So this is pretty strong. So I want some 3 mil aluminium, fold it up, bent back, and then straight down. And that'll give me a good base to start off, um, so we can start mounting some gear. So this is what I was talking about. So a flat bit of aluminium. I've put a couple of folds in it. So you can see that. So I've also put some holes in it to mount it. So the idea is this sits in here. Picks up off the factory locations. And that'll give us a nice solid base to mount these up. Right, so I've just cut some holes in this. So I've got some mounting holes, um, a hole here to feed some wires through, and I've cut this section out for the speaker, um, just so it sits back there as far as it can. Right, so with that folded up, I'm pretty much ready to just, I think I'll paint this black so you can't really see it. Um, and probably then uh, get these mounted and we'll go from there. Right, and just like that, she is now black. Not exactly dry, but good enough. I'm gonna cover this as well so it's um, kind of hidden. Um, to do that, I've just made some spaces that are gonna go on there and there to attach that cover plate to. All right then, so I've just started wiring this up. 
So, slowly, it does look daunting to start with, but if you just tackle wire by wire and just slowly tick them off, um, you'll find it easier. So don't don't look at the whole wiring and, I mean, look over it to start with, but then don't think, shit, I can't do this. Um, just start with one wire, connect that one, and move on to the next one. So I've ran two wires up from the start battery to the manager and auxiliary battery to the um, distribution box here. Now, I'm hoping I can pick up chassis earth off the back here to save me running them back um, to the front. Uh, the only other wires I've had to run to the battery is one of the small data type cables um, and that's to the uh, the large load thingamajig. Taking that panel out uh, out to the spray booth, aka the uh, dirt mound. Throwing a little black paint on, so we'll wait for that to dry. In the meantime, I've still got to wire up a bit here, so we need to wire in the USB and the other 12 volt outlet. So the SIGI outlet, SIGI socket outlet. Um, so that'll be off of the, I'll probably just combine both of them on a one of the 10 amp. Um, outputs out of this. Um, what other outputs? I've got another 10 amp output that needs to go to the front. That will be the amber backlights for the LP6s up on the roof. So I'm going to trigger them through here as well. I'm not putting the solar input here yet. I just don't know where I'm going to mount it, and I don't want to cut and waste wire if I'm, in, you know, if I'm going to um, end up moving it and mounting it somewhere else, and then I waste that length of wire. So. Just gonna hold out on that for now. When I can be bothered, I have to make up another one of these for the other side to mount the inverter, the speaker, and I don't know, something else maybe, if it, if I need. Um, but I'll mount USB, SIGI, and maybe even an Anderson over the other side as well. So a couple more outputs. Also probably trigger the ARB air compressor that's under the seat. Um, now that runs two 40 amp fuses from uh, if you're using the red uh, the ARB wiring, but I'll trigger it through this still. Um, so I'll use an output, go to the relay, and still um, still run uh, the fact or the, the ARB wiring just because it's too big for this. Unless I was to run, no, it is too big for this. All right, so this is what I was saying before about the beauty of these um, connections, I guess, used on the on both, yeah, the Manager 30 and the distribution box here, is there's no, I actually bring a soldering iron over, but I don't think I'll need it here. Um, it's all crimped down, so yeah. Um, strip the wire back, um, push it in, and then using the a screwdriver, you crimp it down and it gives quite a good connection. So that's how easy it is to add another load to this circuit system is um, wire to the to the accessory, um, strip them and feed them in, crimp them down. So that is what we're dealing with. Now I haven't wired everything up yet. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. We've got power, USBs, some rear speakers. Um, we've still got a lot still to do, but. Yeah, that's, um, that's the idea. That's what she... So the manager 30, um, the T3 
TVMS and then a Fusion uh, two-way speaker. I would have loved for that to sit flush with this, um, but I couldn't fold. I couldn't fold this in and fold it up here with what we have. So the next job is going to be mounting the display. So I want to put this display up in the dash here, just for something different. Um, I reckon they'll look pretty cool. So I've got the Fusion head unit underneath here. So I've already installed this. So this unit here, rather than the factory head unit, which is sits up here, um, I wanted to remove that to put something else up here. It just kind of looked tacked on, so um, I found the smallest kind of good looking unit. So this is a marine unit actually. Um, just fabbed up a new panel to sit in there. So rather than what I have here before, uh, 12 volt outlet and also the rear window wiper control. So I have to relocate that. Um, but I've just taken that original panel out used a bit of aluminium, painted it black. I did have to um, just get in there and cut away some of the dash behind that panel just so the head unit can bolt through. Uh, you can see all the wires and stuff up there still, but I wanna make a panel to um, enclose all of this now. So not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it, but yeah, the idea is to mount this Something like that.